Good morning and welcome to Green TV for April 26, 2012. To my right is Cody Bills and I'm Brock Shimbanil. The industry had expectations for large export sales this morning. The USDA released their most recent report. Cody, what were the numbers looking like this morning? Well, I think it was very bullish for beans and it was bullish for wheat. If you take a look at the numbers, though, here we have corn at 645,000 metric tons sold in the old crop and 180,000 in the new crop. That was on the low side of analyst expectations, but it was still within the range. Beans came in well above analyst expectations, even the highest. If you take into account old and new crop sales, we made about 1.4 million metric tons worth of, worth of sales, and the highest analyst expectation was around uh, 1.2, so very positive beans. Wheat came in with about 386 in the old crop, 357 in the new. That was above uh, the highest analyst expectations, so really very positive for beans and wheat. If you take a look at the overall progress in terms of where we need to meet, be to meet the USDA expectations, Take a look at uh, corn. We have, we're ahead of uh, pace, 3.5 million bushels. Uh, we did decline a little bit from last week. We had a couple weeks of disappointing sales. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, with the FAST, uh, FAST did report earlier on this week uh, a, a large sale of about 400,000 metric tons. Uh, and, and I think that with prices drifting off, we could actually have some uh, positive sales going forward in the next couple reports. Sales for beans, though. Here we're uh, 24 million bushels ahead of pace, so very positive for beans. We improved 17 million bushels, and look at this bar. I mean, we, we made some incredible sales last week, and it's very atypical for this time of year. So uh, I, I really like the, uh, the progress here for beans, and I think there's a good chance as we move forward, if we continue to see uh, sales, even over 400,000, that we're going to end up having to revise this higher. Yeah, and like you said earlier, we did see some large sales earlier this week. Uh, China was in the market buying old crop corn and old crop beans, as well as new crop purchases. And we saw a couple of unknown destinations make some rather large purchases as well for this year and for next on corn and soybeans. So that's positive as we move forward. Next week's report should be pretty positive for the market. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at some temperatures that will be affecting the northern growing regions. Grain Hedge is more than just futures trading. Clients receive our cash grain optimizer showing spot and forward bids within 200 miles of your farm. We take into account your trucking costs to find your best selling opportunity. We provide in-depth basis mapping, historical basis and cash price charting. Every day we show you your best price and if it meets your profit goals. Contact Grain Hedge today to get started. Welcome back. The markets are trading live here. We got corn up five, beans down one three quarters, wheat up seven and three quarters in Chicago, and Kansas City wheat contract up only two and three quarters. Also, live cattle trading up 90 cents this morning. Great to see on the heels of that BSE scare on Tuesday that seemed to really drive the trade. Brock, one thing that really seems to stand out to me this morning is, uh, is wheat up seven in Chicago versus up only two in Kansas City. Why are we seeing that divergence? I think the Chicago contract is gaining some support from some cold temperatures that looks like it's going to be moving into those northern growing regions. If you take a look at this temperature map provided by our friends at Planalytics, we can see some of those low nighttime temperatures for the northern regions. Uh, Michigan, northern Indiana, Ohio, it looks like we're going to be in the upper 20s, lower 30s. For the next couple days or so, it looks like uh, not a whole lot is going to change. We're going to see low no nighttime temperatures. It's going to be affecting this uh, SRW crop that is uh, in late stages of development right now. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on this. Make sure you follow us on Twitter to get uh, updates as we move through the next couple days or so. And even into the weekend, we're going to continue to see no cold nighttime temperatures. So this is going to definitely affect this uh, Chicago wheat market more so over that uh, Kansas City wheat market right now. Well, that sounds good. If you have any questions, give us a call at 877-472-4607 or follow us on Twitter. Uh, we'll see you on Friday.